is office hours for the STEM Alliance Minecraft Education Edition Competition 2022. This webinar is co-organized by the STEM Alliance and Scientix as well as Microsoft. My name is Ivana Kovac and I am STEM Alliance Coordinator in the European Schoolnet. Together with us today, we have my colleagues Isidora Salim and Rocio Benito, who will be supporting this webinar from a technical point of view. Should you have any questions and any issues regarding your audio or connection, please do not hesitate to send them a message in the chat. But most importantly, we, it is our great pleasure to welcome our speaker for today, Nina Gibet from Microsoft. Thank you very much, Nina, for being here today with us and presenting and answering our audience's uh, questions today. And now let me just uh, continue with some technical aspects. You will see that all of your microphones have been disabled. And if you have any questions for a speaker, you can just post them in the chat. To, gr to get a greater experience out of this webinar, we invite you to open the chat where we will be sharing useful information and links with you throughout the webinar. And of course, that's where you can post your comments and questions. Also, we want to share the first link with you today. In the chat, you can now click on the participation list to confirm that you have actually attended this webinar. We ask you to do this because we also need to prove uh, that this event took place so that we can continue to organize events like this in the future. And also, if you're interested in a certificate of a participation, this is the only way to request one. And let's come to our agenda for today. Uh, we will begin with an introduction to the STEM Alliance Minecraft competition. And after that, we will move on to a demonstration by Nina, who is our Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. Nina will show you live how to download and how to access Minecraft Education Edition, and also how to build Minecraft worlds with your students. As you already know, we will be able to ask questions throughout this webinar, and our speaker will address them a bit later in the Q&A session. So use this opportunity and share your questions and your thoughts with us in the chat. And before we continue with the Minecraft demonstration, let me just quickly introduce you to this year's competition. So the STEM Alliance Minecraft Education Edition competition is organized by the STEM Alliance and Microsoft. I'm very happy to share with you that the deadline for submissions have, has been extended and is the 22nd of May. This means that you still have time to participate in this competition and win great prizes. You just need to submit your entry in the submission form and I will show you in a second what exactly do you need to do. But let me just explain to you more generally what this competition is all about. This competition is designed to engage students in creative thinking, problem solving, and the better understanding of democracy, citizenship, and peace under the team Active Citizen Building for Peace. Organized in partnership with Nobel Peace Center, this competition will help you learn about some of the winners of the Nobel Peace Prizes and their amazing achievements. You can challenge learners to work in teams of one to five using Minecraft Education Edition to design and build solutions using a world template and teaching resources from Minecraft. Nina, our expert, will show you a bit later how to uh, access this and she will tell you more about all these experts. And now to begin with, let me just ask you a question. How familiar are you with Minecraft? We would like to know if our audience today has already have some basic knowledge on Minecraft or maybe not at all. So on this slide, you have several options to enter the Menti pool. You can either click directly on the link on the slide or in the chat, or you can scan the QR code with your phone. You can also go to menti.com uh, and enter the numbers you see on the screen. 51704593. And now we will give you a minute to enter the Menti poll and then we will see your results. Okay, are we ready to see the results? There we go. Okay, so at this point you're not really into using the chat box, but I think I hope this will change a bit later during the webinar. OK, and we see that one of you has never heard about it and hasn't used it. This is a great place to learn about it from the expert. 
we also have someone who is building worlds in their free time. Great, you came for some more tips. And we also have someone who is really comfortable teaching Minecraft to students. I hope everybody will find this interesting and learn more from this session today. And uh, I'm very happy that we have Mina, that we have Nina today to help us out with this. What I also want to remind you, and I will remind you about this several times during this webinar, is to uh, sign the certificate, sign the participation list if you would like to get a certificate. So several times we will share this in the chat box. So please go ahead if you haven't, please uh, sign up now. Okay, and now let's go back to uh, let's go back to our competition and let's learn more. So I have gave you some basic insights, but uh, I also want to tell you that this competition calls for educators in primary and secondary education in Europe to integrate Minecraft. And uh, also what you need to do, what you need to know is that there are two categories. Category for learners that are 13 years old or younger and for those that are 14 or older. And as I have just mentioned, the competition will run until Sunday 22nd of May. When it comes to the participation, it is actually fairly easy. You just need to visit the competition web page, website and follow the steps. And first of all, please look at the terms and conditions. You will be provided with lots of guidance and you will find all the relevant information there. And here is a step-by-step -step process. First of all, we need to register. Have you registered? If you haven't, please do so. And you still have time to uh, participate in this competition. Once you register, uh, we can send you uh, updates such as the, for example, extension of the deadline, and we can also send you further guidance and information. To register, you just need to go to the web page and you will find the link there. And then we can go to step two, which is download the Active Citizen Minecraft world. You will need to uh, download it to complete, to complete the build challenge. You will find the link to the world on our website. After that, we go to the step three, which is prepare for the challenge. If you're new to Minecraft, as some of us uh, are today, there are many resources available to help you get started. Of course, you absolutely did the right choice uh, by joining these office hours today, where thanks to our expert, we can ask questions and get them answered. But you can also check out the introduction videos and teacher trainings that we provide on the website. Also, when preparing for the integration of Minecraft to your class, please make sure you're familiar with the learning objectives of this build challenge. If you comply with these objectives, you will have higher chances to get some of the great prizes. The objectives are foster appreciation of a democracy, also make sure to raise awareness and understanding of the need for peaceful resolution and enable young people to become active in society. After this, we go to step four, which is integrate the build challenge into class with your learners. For this part, you should split your class uh, in groups of one to five students and specify the actions needed to build a world using Minecraft Education Edition. After this, we go to step five, which is building your vision for peace. The developed world needs to address the topic, what is your vision for peace? Please let your student Students think about something that they are very passionate about and they want to change. Support them in building a model of a new world where this can happen. After that, we go to step six, which is take a 90 second video of your creation. After your learners have built their worlds, take a 90 second video of each of the worlds created. It should be one video per group of students. The videos should cre clearly present the developed world and explain the creation in detail. So we do recommend a voiceover or at least some explanations in English. Make sure to address the selection criteria. So present novelty, creativity and send a clear message on democracy and peace. And if you wonder where you can find these criteria, again, terms and conditions, you will find them there. And although it is a long document, you will be much better prepared for this competition after reading that. And do not forget, the video and the created world must be in English. 
After this, we go to step seven, which is submitting. You remember the registration form from the beginning? So this is where you can submit your video via the same form. Just fill out the information and upload your video in this form. All entry must be submitted by 22nd of May before midnight Central European summer time in order to be eligible for the competition. And then we go to step eight, which is spread the word. Let the world know about your participation in the STEM Alliance Minecraft Education Edition competition. Share your activities in social media and tag the STEM Alliance Minecraft Education Edition. After that, amazing prizes are waiting for you. The prizes will be handed out to you to both teachers and learners in early summer. Also, we want to point out that there are very, very good resources for the teachers on our website, and also there are some in the terms and conditions, and you will find many, many useful resources there. And before we move on, I would just like to remind you again, if you haven't, please go and sign, fill out the form and the, the participation list. It is crucial that you validate your attendance to this webinar today, and the only way to do that is with your digital signature. And also, if you would like to receive a certificate of attendance, you need to fill out this form and submit your email address so we can also send you the certificate. And now let me introduce you to our expert from Minecraft, from Microsoft. Nina Jibe is a global Minecraft mentor and Microsoft innovative educator expert. For the past three years, Nina's goal has been to help educators and students across Europe embrace game-based learning as a part of their teaching process. She's an advocate of using modern educational tools in schools, and she has been helping educators integrate Minecraft Education Edition into their classroom. Nina, how are you today? I'm great. How about you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Thank so, you for this lovely introduction, Ivana. <laughs> You're welcome, Nina. So Nina, Nina, our, um, our mentor for today will be demonstrating the process of entering the Minecraft worlds, of building them, and she will help all the educators who want to participate in the STEM Alliance Minecraft Edu Education Edition competition. Nina, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so hi everyone. <laughs> my name is Nina Schiebert and I will be showing you some of the basics of Minecraft Education Edition today. So hope everyone is doing great. Um, I see that we have some experts in the webinar today, some uh, someone, some who are really, really comfortable using it, so that's great. Um, but I just want to uh, just want to remind you before we jump into it um, that there are so many resources available to you. So make sure to check out the chat where my colleagues are adding all kinds of links and all kinds of guides to help you uh, get to this uh, to this challenge. So today we will go over the basic things like uh, that you need to know to participate in this challenge. Like I will show you how to download Minecraft Education Edition. Um, and sign in, how to find Active Citizen World, create the, create the world, and then we will go over some basics like movement in Minecraft, the world structure, challenge area, of course, um, and of course, how to place and break blocks, because that's obviously the main part um, that you're going to have to know for this challenge. Um, we will also take a look at how we can use some other items like chalkboards, like um, signs and books to make this build even more interesting and interactive. So uh, you can write your questions in the chat at any time, um, but I will answer them during the allocated time for the Q&A at the end of the webinar. We have 10 minutes reserved for, um, for your questions. So let's just jump right into right into Minecraft or, you know, so first let's see how to download it. Um, as you can see, I have this website open. So obviously to participate in this challenge, you will need Minecraft Education Edition and a Cloud 365 account to sign in. So you can find Minecraft on this website. It's called education.minecraft.net. Um, I'm sure it's already in the chat, but in case it's not, uh, yes, of course it is. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, so once you're 
on this website, just click on the download button here at the top of the page, and that will take you to another page. Obviously, some, sometimes it answer us it asks you to participate in a survey we're just gonna go for no here but basically this is what we need here in this red box um you can see there is um there is a button download now button which recommends you uh, your you know a micro education edition that is suitable for your device so you can use micro education edition on windows devices and chromebook mac and ipads uh, but like I said, the version that is suitable for you will be in this red area in the middle of the page. So just click download now and wait for it to download to your device. As you can see, the file is over 600 uh, megabytes large, so it will take a few minutes to download. I'm obviously not going to do it because I already have it, but once it's downloaded, you can just uh, look into your downloads file um, in your or any other designated downloads folder and open the file and follow the instructions for the setup. So how do you actually recognize Minecraft Education Edition? Uh, if you can see here, there is uh, an icon of a bookshelf. So once you've downloaded it, obviously there's gonna be a tiny little icon of bookshelf. Just click on it twice and follow the installation process. I will obviously not show you the whole installation process right now, um, but let me just kind of intercept here and say that usually your students are already familiar with Minecraft and have been playing it for years. So don't be afraid to learn from them about building and other Minecraft related things. Your job as an educator is to lead the activity itself. So for that, you have to make sure first, uh, first of all, that they have the correct version of the game. Um, even if they say they have Minecraft, they usually mean the Java edition or the Bedrock edition and how they differ is by, the, by this icon here. Um, it can either be like a black one or a green one. It's not really important. It has to be this bookshelf um, and it obviously has to say Minecraft Education Edition. So if the icon looks different, then they have the wrong version. So now we have downloaded it and installed it. So let's sign in. Obviously, we need to just click twice on the icon and I'm just gonna um, actually turn off my camera for this part because it can uh, lag a bit on stream if I have everything open. So I'll just uh, I'll just turn it off for now. So this is what Minecraft looks like once you once you start it and now you have to sign in. You need to use the account you use to sign into the Microsoft 365 services like your teams and other um, and other programs that you use. For me, that's a rather simple, not long username at all. <clears throat> so once we sign in, we see a menu with four options here in the middle. The easiest way to find Active Citizen World is by clicking on New and Featured. And it is the second one in the top row. So in New and Featured, you can find a couple of highlighted lessons which change every uh, month. So I suggest that you keep coming back and see if there are any new lessons for you. But today we will use Active Citizen lesson. Uh, so we just click on it. And this opens new menu with some information about the world, who it's appropriate for. So it's for beginners ages eight and up as well and as, as some tags which help you categorize these lessons and see if they're useful for the subject you teach at school. Um, what I also suggest is that you look at the resources that are available to you by clicking on this uh, lesson plan button uh, right here um, on the right. And if time permits, we will look at them together, but um, I really recommend that you can either look at them here or you use the link that, that, um, that my colleagues gave in the chat. So once we are ready to jump into the world, we're just going to click this top button here, create world. And we're going to log into the world in front of this. Um, 
it might might take a few a few seconds to load and usually when it's loading you, there are also some hints and tips that you can that you can read um, that you can you know it, that help you learn a bit more about minecraft okay so we're logged into the world now and you see there is this quite impressive building in front of us um, and you can only go one way because the rest is kind of barricaded um, so the lesson itself is designed in such a way that it guides you through the world so that you can't really walk around where you're not supposed to you always at any point know what you should be doing uh, but some of you said that you have heard of Minecraft but have never played it, so let's go over the movements first. So to move around, you can move forward by pressing the W key, move back by pressing the S key, left by pressing the A key, and right by pressing the D key. So even if you are familiar with the games but not with Minecraft, you see that this W, um, S, A, D, combination is used in lots and lots of games. Um, but if you aren't used to it, then it might take a few, you know, tries to get to get the hang of of how to move around in a in a more comfortable and more um, relaxed way. So to look around the world, as you can see me doing now, you just move the mouse. Um, basically, when I say that you move the mouse, just always Pretend that with your that you're um, controlling your head with the mouse or your neck, and wherever you want to turn, you just your head. That's where you know your mouse should go. So um, Minecraft actually has this quite a neat little feature, um, and if you look at the bottom left part of the screen, you can see that it says H show controls. So when I press press H on my keyboard, uh, you can see there are some basic movement controls as well as how to access your inventory, jump, your chat, uh, and some other controls that we will not use today. And you can always toggle them on or off. Just leave them on for now, so so you can you can uh, take a little peek at it while I'm moving around. So now we entered the building and we are greeted by Alfred Nobel. Uh, we all know Alfred, he's a Swedish chemist, engineer, he's best known for inventing dynamite and of course the Nobel Prize. And in this game, Alfred Nobel is an NPC, which stands for a non-player character. So the role of this non-player character in Minecraft is to, get, to give us or the player information and to guide us. So inter to interact with NPCs, we must click on them with the right mouse button. So just one, one little hint, sometimes people are a bit confused by that. If you're standing too far away and clicking right, uh, right mouse button, then you still won't be able to talk to him. So you need to go a bit closer. And then on the right bottom side of the page, you can see that it says talk and it actually shows that you need to click the right mouse button. So now we open the chat with Alfred. Um, and he introduces himself, uh, himself and he asks if we are um, here to visit the Nobel Peace Center or to participate in this challenge. So the active citizen world is structured, so it has a couple of activities and they are led by famous Nobel Prize winners. I strongly recommend you to take a look at these, um, at these activities. Uh, but right now we do not have time to go over them together. So, but let me just show you quickly how this works. So let me just choose visit. And press OK. And once I'm done chatting with Alfred, I'll just walk into this big room behind us. So there are four paintings, really large paintings on this wall. And each painting has an NPC in it which represents one of the four Nobel laureates. And on the side of this build here in the middle, you can see who each of them is. And if you wish to enter the activity, you need to press this button in front of the painting. So what does that do? It makes the NPC come alive and walk towards us. Uh, again, to talk to him, we right click on him. 
and he will just tell us introduce himself. We can we're gonna exit the activity now, but if you want to start it, we just press start adventure adventure and it's gonna teleport us to the um, area with the activity. So I really recommend you to try these activities with your students before you start a challenge. Maybe maybe it's a bit the deadline is a bit short, but I still it they, they don't take so that long, so you can always just um, go in there, see what they're about, and maybe get some inspiration for your build for the challenge. Um, just make sure to, to tell the students that this world was made by professionals and we are not obviously not expecting your students or you to build um, something on this level. And of course, they won't even be able to do that. So let, let's just have have these activities serve as an inspiration, not as the level of build that is expected of them. Um, so let's jump right into the challenge area. To do that, and we must walk back to Alfred as we just did and talk to him again by pressing right button on him. Go over. He's going to tell us the same thing again. So you say OK, and then we click on the build challenge button. <clears throat> and we are actually teleported into this area where the whole challenge will take place. So you can see that I started flying now. That's actually a quite nifty uh, feature as well. If I press space twice really fast, then I can start um, flying. Um, and if I want to fly higher, I just hold space and to fly down, just hold shift to completely stop flying. I'm just going to double press spacebar. So why is flying, uh, is learning to fly so important? When your students are building whatever they decide to build, it's actually much easier to move around and access places high up if you fly. Um, but so if you see this um, copper blocks on the floor, this is basically your canvas. Build area area for this challenge. So obviously now we need to learn how to build and how do we build in Minecraft? Let me just jump down. So maybe if you if you know anything about Minecraft or you know kinda have heard of it, let me just so I stopped flying and I didn't take any damage. So here what it means we are in this creative mode um, in Minecraft, so we can just fly around and we can't we can't get hurt. You know nothing bad will happen to you or your students because um, you know in the normal let's say normal mode of Minecraft uh, you can actually lose health. That's not that's just a fun fact for for now. Um, here it's not that important. So how do we build? So we have an inventory in Minecraft that we can access by clicking E. Some people remember it because E can stand for everything, um, but you can always just click H and see the keyboard hints if you forget how to access it. Access it, and it's like the fourth one from the bottom. And once again, we click E. Once we are in the inventory, we can see all the blocks that are available to us. These are all the blocks that your students will use for building. You can actually search for the blocks by going into the search um, tab. If you um, if you know the actual name of the block, let's just I don't know, let's go with terracotta or something. So if we search for it, then it's gonna show up in this in our library. Um, you can also just switch between tabs. You can it here. You can see here are the blocks that are like found in nature. Here are some random items, and here is equipment like your armor, your compass, your clock, uh, food, potions, and so on. And you have construction, which obviously are the items that would typically be used as construction. These are not they they don't want to I would don't want to limit you by this. So if your kids want to build something, you know, that's not in the construction tab, it doesn't really matter. Whatever they decide to use, that is um, that obviously fine, even though if it's not in the correct tab. <laughs> so let me just maybe just show you one more thing. If we go into this um, filtered, <laughs> let's say, tab here there are some pluses if you click on the plus 
um, you will just gain access to different types of the same block. Um, but and if, if we if you click on the minus, then it's gonna it's gonna disappear. To avoid that, if you're not sure, if you just want to see all the blocks, I just recommend you stay in this all um, tab. <coughs> so let's see what kind of um, just have a quick look at a couple of different types of blocks. Obviously, we're not going to cover all of them, but I just want to give you a rough idea of what's available to you. You can uh, choose between different types of wood, different types of wall and fences, fence gates, stairs. Just, um, just a fun tip: the stairs are actually really good for using, uh, using for them for building a roof. Um, there are some doors, some trap doors, maybe just a quick, uh, again, with iron door and iron trap door, you won't be able, you can place them, but you won't be able to open them by right clicking on them, but you can just use all of these. So if you don't need to open the door and you're not familiar how to do that, just use any other doors. Um, there's also some, some glass, different types, different, different shapes and different colors. We have some slabs, um, some stone bricks, some magical Minecraft uh, items that don't really exist um, in the real world. But then we have copper, we have wool, carpet even, which is great for decorating, concrete, um, just different types of terracotta. These are going to be a bit different because they are uh, reskin, so don't worry about that if you're not familiar with these blocks. Um, some lighting, lighting is always good to light up your builds. And again, more wood and food and corals, plants, dyes, and so on. These eggs, these I don't recommend using them, but you may of course obviously use, you can, you can use, you can make some, um, some animals. Let me just see if you can actually, yes, you can actually add some animals if you wish. But that's not really that important. Some of these just want to um, make sure that you know that some of these are, you know, not so friendly. You can have like cats and cows and and sheep, but there's also some like skeletons and zombies and spiders and other 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 things that aren't that friendly. And armor, okay, and you know, different types of potions, different kind of types of decorations or furniture. And chemistry, um, chemistry blocks, but you don't really need those. But let's just quickly let me show you how you can build. So I'm just gonna quick, I don't know, just take this copper and some kind of terracotta. Okay, it's not gonna be the prettiest build, but it's gonna. Uh, I just want to show you how how to place and break some blocks. So you can see me moving these blocks from the library into my hotbar on the bottom. This is called the hotbar. You can either move the items by clicking on the item you wish with the left uh, mouse button and then move it here or shift like, uh, left click on the button on the item and it will move it to the hotbar automatically. Um, so now I have the random items I chose um, that are available for me to build with. You can see on the right side of the screen, um, here's like an X button to close our inventory or press E. And right now I have in my arm, I have this, this um, block of copper. So to switch between these items, you can either use your mouse wheel which is the easiest way, or you can press numbers one to nine. Um, so the left square of the hotbar is number one and the right square of the hotbar is number nine. And you can see what you're holding by looking at the hotbar or by looking at your hand. Um, but at the hotbar, but whichever square has a thick border around the item is the item that is chosen. So since we are in creative mode, all the blocks are available to us in infinite stock, so you can never run out of items. And we have our items chosen, so let's just build something really quickly. Now to place the block, you need to look at the block you want to build on. You can see the little plus sign in the middle, the little crosshair. 
this is where our character is going to place things. So if I click on the right mouse button, I placed my, my block. Now most of the Minecraft uh, Minecraft blocks aren't affected by gravity. Some of them are, but we will not go through them now. But so if I stay, so they will stay exactly where I place them. If I even if I remove the blocks below them, but if I want, but I cannot place a block in the air. If I want to just place it here, I need to kind of build up these blocks that I can later remove. So how did I remove them? I just simply clicked on them with the left right uh, left mouse button. So I place them with the right mouse button and remove them with the left mouse button. <clears throat> and you can of course always replace the blocks in your hotbar or put more than um, nine stacks of of these items. So we'll, uh, just using front of the house. Sure. Best build. <laughs> so another trick that um, you can use is if you don't know, let me just move this. If they, if you used a block and you don't know which one, which block you used, you can actually, you can actually go to the block that you used and click on it with the uh, mouse wheel and it will appear in your hotbar and in your hand and it will replace one of the blocks in your um, in your hotbar. So in case um, you press E and you can see the block library just switch between these three options at the top. Open book is just the, uh, is the block library, book and chest, um, that opens the library and your inventory. So this is the library, this is the inventory. That might be, you know, one of the best options if you're used to building like that, or maybe this one is best. And this, if you press on the chest, it only shows you your inventory. So if it only shows your inventory, you just know you need to press one of these buttons. <clears throat> so now that we uh, built this structure, we might we might want to add some signs to explain what exactly what exactly we built. You know, these signs and boards and chalkboards are actually a great uh, way to to convey some information. And you know, in this challenge, it's always it's always good to to have some option to where you can write things down. So to do that, let me just take the book as well. Book and quill. Okay, so I took few items, they are actually called assessment tools. Um, so what you can do is use a sign. Sign only has space for four lines of text. And now I don't, okay. <laughs> then you can see there's another, or I can just add, I'm out of, right, okay. So just obviously just write, you can see that there's four lines of space. Uh, lines of text. Um, sign can be edited if you wish to make a change later on. Um, you can of course break it and make a new one and it can be placed on any type of wall or on the ground. Um, and there are also three types of chalkboards. They're called the slate, poster, and, uh, and a board. And you can use these to write messages on it. The um, like the sign, they can be placed on the ground or on some kind of wall. And depending on how much text you need um, to write, you have different options. Slate is the smallest, poster a bit bigger, and board the biggest. This can be edited. So if I am adding text, so I'm just now you can see that I can right click on them again, and I can actually delete or just replace the text. Um, and add or, or you know, just whatever I want to do, I can edit it. So if you left click on them, they will again disappear along with the text that you wrote. So in case you have a lot of text, I always recommend that you have a backup Word or Excel file on your computer. And other another sign or another item that I want to show you is the book and quill. And you can use that to write. So you can you can write the text. 
into the item book and quill. And click um, assign and you can you actually have to enter your your title here. So random title, why not? So you can sign and close. So once you've done that, it cannot be edited, but you can place them in a chest or somewhere as a decoration, like a lectern. So if I place a lectern, you can just place the book on top of it and right click on it. You can read it, what, what it says. <clears throat> so if some of you may be familiar with NPCs, um, like so let's let's say like these characters like Alfred Nobel, um, but they cannot be used here. So you know if you wanted to add your your own your own little NPCs, you cannot. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, then it's fine. <laughs> then you don't need to know. Um, but I'm just mentioning it because I saw there are some experts here already. So once you're done, you obviously can record your build, or if you're not ready to record right away, just click escape, save and exit, save and exit again. And to find your worlds, go to play and view my worlds. So here you will find your saved, your all the worlds that you saved, um, so you can come back to it. Okay, this is a somewhat quick run through of the important features that you need to know as an educator to help your students participate in the challenge. Um, and I would like to just maybe touch on on the multiplayer a bit more. So obviously it's easiest if the students are able to build at the same time. That's why you or one of the students can host a multiplayer world that the whole group can join and play together. Um, so it's important that the stu students are using the same tenant. So let me just show you what I mean by that. Oh, okay. So once I sign in, this is let's say this is my my username. So, so if you look if you look at this username, you can you see that it consists of. Um, Usually a first and last name, not in my case, but usually probably you, you should have like something like Nina Siebert at Microsoft.com. Um, and the at sign and the name of the organization. So like your school and you know, like your school or Microsoft or whatever, basically everything after the at sign, this is the at sign, in, just in case you didn't know, is a tenant. So this is a tenant. So if your students all have the same text here after the add sign, they should be able to, to join the same multiplayer uh, world. Let me just quickly get right back into it. And you will also get an email and I can also link you to an article on how to set up a multiplayer game in Minecraft Education Edition. Um, and it's gonna be in the email that you will receive after this webinar. So just another how to actually I'm just going to show you how to host. If I press play, let's say I can. If I want to go with new and featured and start active citizen, I can create the world here. And once it's loaded. Just press escape and go to this tab, not not here with the world, but weird for for um, little characters. Click on start hosting, confirm, and this is the join code that that the kids have to have to use. You can also share the link, um, but let me just show you. So this is the join code. There are four little characters. How how they would start? How they would join is if I show you. This is from the host, like host's point of view. And so whoever's making the world, this is what they should they should do. And now I'm going to show you what they need to do, what the, the students who want to join the class need to do or the, the world. Again, you go into play, then you have join world. And remember these little four characters I showed you earlier or a little items, uh, icons, just obviously write them in the correct order and click confirm. And if there is an existing game, you should be they should be able to join the world. 
sometimes it doesn't use so in there so i'm just going to show you a quick workaround that you can use in case you cannot make your multiplayer work one time um you just have a student build something um in the active citizen world as we did and then they can go so again play and if you my world and they can go to active citizen they can go here to manage and export the world just you have to be careful when they click on manage because delete is right <laughs> below on the same area as uh, manage so go to manage click export and you can actually save it as a minecraft world file save it and what the students can do once it's on your on your computer they can go to import and click on the active citizen world open it and it will usually open by itself in case it doesn't uh, first it's going to tell you that it imported successfully but if it doesn't like load you directly into the world then just go into view my world and you should find this world here see you have i have another one this is the one i exported and this is the one i imported which is technically the same world okay so <laughs> maybe just some random hints i see i see i have like a couple of more minutes <laughs> and i just want to use them real fast so random hints and helpful like tips that that can sometimes happen so some some quick troubleshooting so sometimes the whole display just disappears and the students are confused what happened so see here on the bottom you can see my hotbar and the hearts and the and the little other other icons if I press F1, then this disappears along with my hand. And when that happens, students maybe freak out real fast. So just keep calm and you just have to press the F1 button on your um, key on your keyboard and it will reappear. And again, another thing you can do um, or students like to do and don't know how to change it back. If they press F5, the point of view from first person um, will will switch to different views and you can just switch between them. <clears throat> and you can also again press F5 or that can actually be done in settings as well. Um, in the let me just find that -da -da, video games just you can you can change the camera perspective here. And just one more thing, sometimes Minecraft can appear a bit flickery. There's like a white flashing um, light, but if that happens, just go into settings. And again, so to go to settings, press escape and find video settings. Uh, video settings and just toggle full screen on and that should solve the issue. But other than that, um, I think you are ready to tackle this, <laughs> this challenge. Um, I will now I will now um, answer any of your questions. So if you have anything that that is confusing or you don't are not exactly sure, you are welcome to ask me in the chat. Thank you very much, Nina, for this great demonstration. It's really interesting. And as we did not get a lot of questions in this chat, I think that you have already answered some of the questions our audience might have had. We, but we have such Minecraft professionals today. <laughs> there you go. Not a lot of work for us to do afterwards, right? <laughs> OK, but anyhow, we did receive some uh, questions via email. So if you don't mind, let's let's address them now. Mm -hmm. uh, so the questions that we got uh, are regarding the size of the group. So the question is, could I submit a board cre created by the whole class or preferably in small groups? Our suggestion would be that it should be a group of one to five students and where it's easier to specify the actions needed. Nina, do you have any advice regarding this? What do you think about the size? Is it the more the merrier or in this case, it's different role? I think when you are working in bigger groups, especially when you are new to using Minecraft, it's better to go into smaller groups. It's more manageable to you as a teacher and, and for them as the students. And it's easier for them to communicate um, among themselves what they want to build. If you have 
obviously Minecraft multiplayer has a 40 player limit, so there can be big groups and you can do that. Um, you can do that in classroom after the challenge, but for this challenge specifically, you should work in smaller groups. Thanks a lot, Nina. Um, another question is regarding the voiceover to the video. And uh, the question is, does it have to be in English? Yes, so to answer your question, yes, all videos should uh, be in English and it would be really great if you could also do the voiceover or at least give some explanations in English. That is one of the, one of the things that are really a must. Um, also, I just want to share something regarding the uh, registration. It's really important for everybody who wants to participate to register because also once you register, we can keep the track and we can also send you updates, also uh, inform you if we have extension of the deadline as we did have now, and also any further guidance of, or information. So it's really important for everybody to register. Uh, Nina, did, did you want to say something about the registrations as well? No? No, I think I think you covered it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, also, when it comes to the results, we just want to emphasize that uh, this uh, competition lasts until the 22nd of May. So we do still have some time if you're enthusiastic and you have a good team and you have, uh, first of all, students who are willing to do so. And I believe it's going to be a really, really good challenge for them. You still have time. So um, after the 22nd of May, we will close the competition. And after that, the panel of jurors will go through all the submissions and select the winners. And we expect that uh, in the early summer, we will be uh, able to inform you. And we will also publish this on the website and uh, social media. I just wanted to um, just share, I already linked it in the chat, the multiplayer guide article. Let me just share my screen real fast if you have a couple of extra minutes. So this is just the article that's going to help you with the most common questions about how to host, how to join multiplayer. You have a video tutorial, um, you have a whole text and different links and all kinds of, you know, information and instructions on how to do it. And again, you have a troubleshooting section. Um, so in case it doesn't work, just go through it, see if you can if you can, if you can, you know, fix it or you can change something, it might. I mean, you, at the bottom here, you can you have a submit a request uh, form as well, so you can actually ask the Minecraft team directly, and they can help you as well. Um, that's just what I wanted to show you because we don't really have time to go into multiplayer really um, in in detail. Thank you, Nina, for sharing this in the chat. It will be also shared with our uh, participants later when we send them the uh, certificates and also thank you note for being with us today. Uh, what I also would like to mention is the um, limit of the submissions. Please do not forget that there is no limit of submissions per teacher, but there is a limit of one submission per team. So the teacher can win only once for the one submission. And also one more thing regarding the registration to the Minecraft Education Edition. We sometimes get questions about the Office uh, three, 365 Education account and is it really necessary to have that one. In case you do not have it, in case your school does not have the licensed copy of this, uh, you can actually use the free trial. Uh, it's fully functional, it contains all the features of the paid version, but the trial is limited to 25 logins where for the teacher with an office uh, 365 education account and 10 logins for other users for example students before a paid license is required to continue playing so even if you, your school does not have the account there is still the the chance to to uh, find a way and be part of this great competition um, what I would also like to say now that uh, we are also running out of time and uh, I just want to remind everybody if you haven't uh, filled in the um, participation forms, please do so so that we can have your details and we can send you the certificates after. And we are also sharing with you in the chat the link to the feedback survey and we would really, really appreciate if you could take it will not take more than three minutes of your time to give us your uh, comments and the thoughts and feedback on your on the webinar today and to tell us 
how can we improve in the future? Uh, Nina, do you have any final uh, comments or notes or cheers to our uh, participants? Maybe just maybe just some uh, words of encouragement <laughs> for the teachers. Um, I know if you're using Minecraft for the first time, it can seem a bit scary. You you know you don't know. You're still getting used to moving around and you getting the hang of Minecraft. And you and on top of that, teaching as well. I just wanted to let you know that usually, what I recommend, I, what I always recommend to teachers is have the you know learn from students. You probably have so many <laughs> students in your in your class that are much better than you at Minecraft, much better than me at Minecraft. They just you know know so many things and just don't be afraid to ask them for advice. Ask them how something is done. Because they they have so much knowledge about this that you can benefit from, and the whole group, and of course the whole class can benefit from. And your role as an educator is to basically to educate, to so to explain the activity, to you know guide them with the with the curriculum and everything. Not not the not so much the playing and you know the Minecraft specifics that that your students probably already know. In case maybe if we have like three minutes extra, I just want to show you one more thing while I'm at it. Um, oh, okay, yeah, I just want, let me just um, go back to my, to my, I cross, no, so it's not like, I imagine your students having to type that if you have small, <laughs> you have young students. Um, what I wanted to show you, if you don't know Minecraft and you really want to participate in this challenge, but you want to practice a bit more, is going to play. We have view library um, section. Go to how to play section, and you know start to start here either keyboard or touch or additional tutorials, but just start here keyboard for me because I have a uh, laptop. So. And you have different tutorial worlds that are designed to, you know, kind of get you more comfortable with using Minecraft about you can learn how to move, you can learn how to place and break, you can learn how to interact with levers and buttons and NPCs. Uh, and then also we mentioned we mentioned chalkboards today, so you can learn how to use chalkboards and there are some other um, there are some other tutorials about how to use camera and portfolio and NPC. So if you really want to start using Minecraft and don't know where to begin and don't want to go straight into, you know, teaching students, I really recommend that you go into this view library and how to play section of the game. <laughs> Thank you, Nina. Thank you. Those are very, very useful advices for our teachers. So everybody, the recording of this web webinar will be together with the slides available on the STEM Alliance web website in the following days. And we will also send you a follow up email with all the details you need and all the links that we have shared in the chat uh, that Nina has shared with us. Nina, one more time, thank you so much for your thank demonstration. You. It was very interesting. And that's all from us today and um, have a great evening, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.